You're listening to a taste of Karma Air's Dark Matter with Michael Parker for the weekend of July 15th, 2007. Coming up on this segment, Michael Parker speaks with remote viewer David Morehouse, who's the creator of the Remote Viewing Training Course and also the author of The Psychic Warrior. So you're probably asking yourself, what is remote viewing? Well, here, let's take a listen. Well, it was not a, a psychic phenomenon per se. It's not, uh, it's not anything really more than uh, a hyper-intuition uh, that's built into a protocol, a structure, a dogma, uh, an ability that is inherent in each of us. But what the Central Intelligence Agency back circa 1972 to 1978 developed a protocol that allowed each one of us to go through this structured protocol to extract information from the unconscious mind. Uh, sort of a detecting and a decoding process. Now, what that was called, uh, or the, the CIA definition, or the Department of Defense definition, was the learned ability to transcend space and time, to view persons, places, or things remote in space and time, and to gather and report intelligence information on the same. Mm -hmm. That was the Department of Defense definition of what a remote viewer was. Uh, so as I said, it's not something unique to me. You don't have to get shot in the head. You don't have to uh, uh, have a near-death experience. You don't have to have some other significant trauma in your life, be it emotional, be it spiritual, be it physical. Uh, those things sometimes trigger an mm -hmm. innate ability in us, but all of us have the ability to do this. All that happened in this research program at Stanford Research Institute International in Palo Alto, circa 72 to 78, as I said, funded uh, by the CIA, uh, was to develop a, a structured protocol, a, a, a way to take the unconscious mind or these perceptions of the unconscious mind and to objectify them into two-dimensional media in the terms of being able to write down verbal sensory data and to sketch two-dimensionally what, what you are perceiving distant mm -hmm. in space-time. So uh, sketches of people, sketches of places, sketches of things, sketches of activities, uh, verbal perceptions of color and texture and temperature and taste and sounds and smells. Uh, those kinds of things are what a remote viewer is capable of doing. So it's not magic. It's not something uh, strange and unusual. It's an ability that all of us have. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we experience it all of the time. Uh, we we experience uh, intuitive experiences or precognition or other things. We uh, you know there are lots of words to describe this thing and we, this activity this this sense that that is uh, inherent in each of us. Mm -hmm. We all experience it, and all that happened with remote viewing is uh, again they developed in a, a a protocol that allowed us to extract it on demand uh, to go into a an altered state of consciousness on demand and to follow this structure to extract information that could be used. And I, that that state, that was the, the theta wave state, is that correct? Well, if you're in a in a beta wave state, uh, I mean... A theta wave? Be, no, in a beta wave okay. state, uh, where we are now. Okay. Uh, your, your mind is too prone to being refocused at other things, like mm -hmm. the light's too bright in the room, or I hear the sound of somebody walking by outside, or the TV in the other room, or some other kind of waveform uh, that's present can distract you. To go into an alpha wave state, then you begin to be aware of your physical surroundings, but not so focused on them, and you can focus more on the perceptions of the unconscious mind. So an alpha wave state is a good state in which you can function and, and when you're first learning coordinate remote viewing, uh, that's pretty much the brainwave state that you're functioning in because it's too difficult for you to try to remember the protocol or the structure, stage one, stage two, stage three, etc. Uh, it's too difficult for you to focus on that and to focus where you are in the structure of the page and what you're writing and whether you're an analytical overlay, etc. for you to get fully into theta. But as you develop your skill and as you develop your experience level, 
it's easier for you to get into a theta wave state and to completely disengage from your physical surroundings and your awareness of them and to just immerse yourself totally into the structure and the protocol of coordinate remote viewing. The, the quality of the data increases when you're able to reach that level, but it only comes through training and practice. Now, when, I, from what I understand, I mean, we do not officially have a remote viewing program anymore, correct? Well... Yeah, I mean, when once the, the book Psychic Warrior was written, then, of course, uh, that kind of opened the floodgates for every other person that was in the remote viewing unit to write a book. And mm-hmm. so, you know, Paul Smith wrote a book, Lynn Buchanan wrote a book, uh, Skip Atwater wrote a book, uh, you know, Joe McPonagall wrote a book. Uh, so everybody's written a book to tell their version of that particular story in that particular organization that was at Fort Meade, Maryland. Um, the official position on it is that once this organization, this unit was exposed, uh, then it was disengaged from an active intelligence collection uh, protocol anymore, and it was shut down, and nobody else belonged to it, and went away. Now, you and I both know that that's just not something that's going to happen. You don't invest tens of millions of dollars into a... a, uh, into an intelligence collection protocol and then suddenly just shut it down. I wouldn't uh, think so. They just don't. They they just moved it to another place and put it deeper black and, you know, have continued to train and develop. I mean, you know, it, it's it's not something that I don't want anybody to think that I've ever said that it's 100% accurate because it isn't, but none of the intelligence collection protocols are. Right. Uh, now, that seems to be kind of a... That seems to be kind of a foothold for critics to step in and say, yeah, well, you know, uh, how accurate was it? 